hey guys, let's call each other up and go for brunch. That never happens. I mean, we get dragged along to this brunch and it's a combination of breakfast and dinner, but it's, it's, a, it's a girl thing, a family thing. But when's the last time you called up your buddy that you're having a bromance with and said, want to meet for brunch? But it is May and that's the season for brunch and all kinds of summer things and graduation and Mother's Day. Hi, I'm Larry Baker. I am a level two certified sommelier and senior wine and spirit specialist here at ABC Fine Wines and Spirits. Um, first of all, happy Oregon Wine Month, uh, the month of May. And you know we've talked about how much we love Oregon wine, but that's a, a whole different subject. I've, I've beaten you to death with Oregon wine, so you know we have a great selection of rosés, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir. Drink Oregon, celebrate the great wines of Willamette Valley and out there in the Dundee Hills and all that in the state of Oregon. May is the month for Oregon. But we know brunch is like a late breakfast combined with lunch and uh, brunch. How come we don't have uh, a dinner, you know, lunch and dinner? But I guess that would be an early bird. Yeah, but anyway, brunch is something that this time I get asked a lot. A lot of people having uh, maybe uh, some bridal showers, baby showers for some reason in May. Uh, uh, Mother's Day, that's going to be a brunch. All these restaurants having brunch, but you might be putting one together at your home. So there's there's some fun wine, or the ladies have a brunch, the tennis club has a brunch. So brunch seems to be popular in the month of the summer months and spring and summer month. So, so I thought I'd give you some ideas. And uh, besides being a certified sommelier, a mixologist, a, a certified mixologist, and 18 years uh, working behind the bar, not behind bars, that's may happen one day, but no, not behind bars, but actual liquor bars. So I thought I'd go over some ideas and uh, uh, with some of our direct to you products. And I'm going to start off first with cocktails that are great for brunch. The classic, a mimosa. People make a, a big mistake with mimosa. It's orange juice. Uh, it's orange juice with a sparkling wine. But where's the mistake that people make? They don't go with a brute. They, they, they put Moscato and they make uh, sparkling Asti Spumante and they make, uh, that that's a big mistake. It's like, what's Moscato? It's 95% sugar and orange juice has so much. 28 grams of, uh, of sugar in a little a couple ounces is so much sugar in orange juice. No, you want a brute and you want something else, uh, to offset that. So never use even demi-sec in, 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 in a mimosa. Always use as dry as you can get. And uh, I would go with a cava. This is Mas Vida. I haven't talked about this cava a lot. We were out of stock and now we have plenty of it. Uh, Mas Vida, I guess more life or good life. Uh, cava is a sparkling wine made in the Pinedas region of Spain. This is all a state bottle. It means they use their own grapes. The grapes are usually Macabeo I've talked about before and Chirello. Uh, I, I think that cava makes the best mimosas because it's got a good citrus flavor that matches with the orange juice. It is a brute and most importantly that all cavas by law are made in the double fermentation style, the method champenois, so you get that natural bubbles from the secondary fermentation. This is a 1099 cava. We always have them cold, have a couple of cases. A great wine with brunch. You can always spike it with your favorite orange flavored liqueur from Triple Sec or others, you know the one, and put a little bit on top. But simple as that, it's a cava, a brut, some form of brut, but I recommend cava, and then you go with the orange juice. Um, next, I want to talk about an Aperol Spritz. Uh, Aperol is the brand name of a bitter that comes into the family like Campari, those brand names you know, Amaro. Amaro means bitter. But Aperol is a little bit less bitter, and you add Prosecco. Some people add club soda. I don't. I forget the club soda. But if you see those pink drinks all over Europe at happy hour time and during brunch, it's odds it with an orange slice, pretty much it's going to be uh, Aperol. First, I want to talk about the bitter. This is Amaro Chiacaro. This is from Italy. Same price as the popular brand name. And also, I actually like it a little bit better than the Aperol Spritz. And it's something that only we have here at ABC from Italy. It's in the bitter family, but it's not as bitter. It has a little bit more sweetness, a hint of sweetness to it. And I think it works great. So you would put, uh, for the Prosecco, I chose our high Prosecco. Uh, I don't like to use Prosecco Superior because after all you're making a cocktail, why use your best Prosecco by yourself? This is a great Prosecco for the money, $10.99, made in Canigliano. Uh, it's an extra dry, a little off dry, which you want for a Prosecco and an Aperol, or we can call it uh, our own Amaro Spritz, uh, Chiacaro Spritz. Um, and you would put three parts of the Prosecco, two parts of this, or 
uh, just uh, about two parts, of, and, and just leave out the, the club soda, and garnish with a lime, I mean an orange slice rather, that's a spritz. Uh, but the pink, it'll make the pink flavor and the, the off dryness of the Prosecco will work well to work really. Also, I want to show you something that uh, people use as a popular brand name of elderflower, uh, elderflower liqueur that you know of very well. It starts with a saint, but this is our brand. This is a Fiorente. I have tasted the when my uh, wine supervisor, Paul Craglini, another plug for ABC uh, Paul, uh, ABC Paul Q, I think it is, at, at Twitter. But when we tasted this just straight, I thought I could drink this straight on the rocks. It's that delicious. Put a little bit of elderflower liqueur, uh, maybe even a little ginger if you have a little ginger extract, and Prosecco. Same thing, the high Prosecco that I show for $10.99. This is 1999 on sale. We're going to go, okay? Um, <clears throat> Also, another drink that you can make with a, 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 a Prosecco is a Bellini. So again, we take the high Prosecco. We have the Prosecco for $10.99. And I like to use a peach schnapps. A peach schnapps. And this is Charles Regenet, $7.99, but any brand will do. But this is our direct-to-you brand. Great peach schnapps. So you get the peach flavor. But Bellini usually requires fruit, a peach puree, frozen fruit. I like it slushy. It's easy. Forget it. Go to the store, find either mango or peach, your favorite brand, Publix brand, whatever, peach sorbet. Put a little bit of the peach schnapps, the Prosecco, and then a scoop of the, uh, uh, just a little round ball scoop, right into the champagne glass or the flute that you're using, and you've got a slushy Bellini. It's all done. The sugar and the peach is already in the sorbet. Little trick for me, bartending trick, makes a really good refreshing brunch drink. As far as wines, I have a couple I wanted to do. I love a white Domaine de Joie is back in stock from the Côte de Gascon, which is in the Pyrenees Mountains of France. And this is a blend of Colombard, Uni Blanc, Gros Mansang. I know these are oddball grapes to you. A little Sauvignon Blanc. And it's just so refreshing. A little exotic fruits of lychee and crisp and light. $7.99, the perfect brunch wine. And... Last but not least, a rosé, but I thought I would hate this product. The lady who represents this French libation, she comes here all the time and tastes me on this stuff. I hate it. What is this rosé with grapefruit flavor? And I said, stop tasting me on this, but now I'm a believer. This is the per, if you do it the way, really either ice cold or pour over crushed ice. Pour this. This is a pool wine. This is a brunch wine. It is so refreshing, the rosé with that fresh crispness, crisp flavor of the grapefruit, like pink grapefruit. It is one of the most refreshing things. This is inexpensive, like nine bucks, and you get a really wonderful French-made rosé with grapefruit, not high alcohol, so you can drink this during lunchtime. It would be good. And last but not least, I'll throw it in one more time because it is Oregon Wine Month, the Portland Wine Project. All right, enough for the Bodecker Cellars, but it is my new favorite rosé, 100% Pinot Noir from Oregon. For any information about these wines or even the other products that you need, uh, you can go to abcfws.com, uh, our website, or if you want the exact recipes, you can contact me by becoming a blog follower. It's free. Just put your email address in there and uh, and you'll and you'll be set there uh, all together and follow my blog and I will get back to you in some way or contact you uh, with the recipes and ideas. Remember, wine's not for snobs. You know, it's for everyday people like you and me, even guys that call each other up and say, let's do brunch. <laughs>